And welcome back to the Financially Simple Experience. So friends, another year, another year has almost come by. As I'm recording this, Christmas, New Year's is rapidly approaching. And as I think about this new year, the new opportunities, a new beginning, as some would call it, I'm thinking, man, where did the one that I'm currently in, where did this year 2023 go? Just seems like yesterday that we were launching into a new year. We were looking at the things ahead of us. And here we are almost December, as I record this, December when you listen to this, of my goodness, where's it gone? The older I get, the faster time flees. I'm reminded of a Latin term that I learned in grade school called tempus fugit. Tempus fugit. In other words, time is flying. I don't know about you, but I, I, the older I get, the more I relish, the more I remember various things in my past. I was looking at my daughter who's home from college over the Thanksgiving break, and I was like, I remember sitting in this chair holding you on my chest, smelling your new, like this baby smell that, I, that a baby always has. And now she is in college. And time flies. But every year we have this opportunity. We have the opportunity to to pause and look back of what happened in this year and then to recharge and prepare ourselves for next year. Obviously, the future is bright. I, I sincerely believe that tomorrow will be better than today. I sincerely believe that there is something in front of each of us that only we can accomplish, that as long as we drive toward our purpose, our impact, whatever it is your word is for you personally, as long as we drive toward that particular desire, goal, aspiration, dream, whatever it may be, then the future is always bright. But as we sit here at year end, there are some things that we can look through. There's some checklists, some year end checklists that we can look at as business owners to help set next year up where it's paramount, where it's exciting, where it is brighter than anything in the past. Now, over the last few episodes, we've been talking specifically to financial advisors who happen to own their own business. And as we talk to financial advisors who are business owners, we've been dealing a little bit more with specificity around the financial advisory practice. But just perhaps you're not a financial advisor. That's okay. The same content is directly applicable to your business. So as we look at 2023, as we wrap this year up, what are some things that we can think about? The first one is I want to challenge you to celebrate the wins of your team, with your team. Celebrate the wins. You know, as a business owner, we're often looking forward into the future. As I'm even talking through the to the, the introduction to today's podcast, I'm leaning into the future saying it's going to be better. It's going to be brighter. Doesn't mean it's going to be easier, but we as business owners often love to create. We often love to forge new paths. As we look at a new year, we many of us, you know, just seize the moment. We, we, we grab the bull by the horns, whatever your analogy is, we do it so that we can we can motivate our team, so that we can help our customers, so that we can ultimately reach our own personal goals. But at this time of the year, it's an unbelievable opportunity for us as business owners to celebrate the accomplishments, to celebrate the growth, to celebrate the milestones that were created or that were passed or that were experienced this previous year, this year that we're in. There's a blog written by Vation Ventures, and they report that 69% of employees would work harder. They would work harder. They'd be more plugged in if they felt their company better appreciated their efforts. Now, it doesn't mean that we need to acknowledge significant accomplishments only. See, as business owners, it's the little things. It's the little wins that many times we just want to give an attaboy or an attagirl to. Just pat on the back. I'm reminded of an example years ago where a very powerful CEO walked into his corporate headquarters. And as he greeted the young lady in this case at the front desk, the young receptionist who was in their early 20s, he paused and then celebrated a particular accomplishment that this young lady had accomplished in her professional career. He knew her particular milestones. He knew exactly what she had done to impact the company. And he paused and he greeted this young lady. An onlooker looked at the CEO, and as the CEO walked across away from the desk, an onlooker came up aside and said, why did you take your time to acknowledge the receptionist? Quote, she's just a receptionist. As he was answering this onlooker's questions, he paused and he said, this, this young lady, this receptionist, is the gatekeeper to our company. At this moment in time, there is no one more important in my purview, CEO speaking, than this young lady and the accomplishments that she's had. Interestingly enough, 
As he was speaking to this onlooker, the young receptionist heard him. And she was filled with pride. She was filled with admiration that even the CEO recognized her. Perhaps the lowliest on the on the org chart. Perhaps just a rank and file employees from a technical term. But she heard the CEO of this powerful company acknowledge the good job that she was doing. It elevated her career to where she later became an executive within the own company. So friends, we have this amazing opportunity at this time of the year to give thanks and then to celebrate the wins of our team, to look back on what they accomplished and speak life into each of our team members. It is so, so much easier to work alongside people that you care about, that you trust, that you celebrate with, that you're there giving high fives, et cetera, than it is to have team members who are disgruntled, feeling they're used, or perhaps not being part of the team. It's a great time of the year for us to celebrate the wins and the accomplishments and the milestones of our players on our team. So to me, that's number one on our checklist. Number two, let's review what happened this year in the financials of our company. Were we on budget? Did we meet budget? Did we exceed budget? Where did we exceed? Where were we under? How are we going to adjust our next year's budget? Are we looking at it by department? Are we looking at it by, by line item within the P&L or the income statement? See, this is the amazing time of the year where we're looking and saying, okay, we had a profit margin of X. Maybe it's a 15, 20, 30, 40%, whatever your particular company is doing. What can we do to drive the profit margin up 0.5%? There's a strategy that I learned years ago while working with the Exit Planning Institute as one of the instructors there. And the strategy, you've heard me speak about it many times, is five by five by five. This is the time of the year where my brain begins thinking about this strategy five by five by five. And for those of you who are new to the show, the five by five by five strategy is this. What can we do next year? As we look at our financials for this year, as we look at the results in our in our income statement or our P&L, depending on which one you, your, your particular business uses, as we look at the results, what can we do next year to increase top line revenue by 5%? Here's my first five. How can I increase top line revenue by 5%? The next five in my five by five by five strategy is what can we do next year to reduce SGNA, sales and general accounting expenses, by 5%? So cost of goods, how can we reduce that particular uh, uh, that particular line item, along with wages, along with rent, along with fixed asset costs, interest, whatever is in your income statement or your, or your charter accounts and your P&L, what can we do to reduce SG&A by 5%? And then finally, the third five in our five by five by five analogy is what can we do to increase margin by 5%? What can we do to increase our profitability, our margin by 5%? When you look at this particular exercise, which is what I love to do at this time of the year with our business owners, what it's forcing you to do is how can I increase top line revenue? How can I get more sales? What can I do to increase customer acquisition? There's your marketing and your sales department. Then you get into your people and your operations, your finance and legal departments around what can we do to cut expenses? Where can we cut? Where do we have a little bit of a bloat in our budget? Where's our income statement showing that, hey, we had a drastic increase? Where do we hold the line? That's part of your five by five by five calculation. And then finally, the margin point is the creativity. How can we motivate our team? How can we put different systems, processes in place to increase margin by 5%? It's an unbelievable strategy, friends. You may say, well, Justin, my margin right now is currently 20%. You're asking me to go to 25%? No, 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 no. That's not a 5% increase. So let's say you have 20% margin. A 5% increase would move it from 20 to 21%. So what can you do to increase margin by 5%? Now is the time of the year, friends, when we're looking at our financials to see how did we perform and what can we adjust next year. The third checklist item that I often do in my own personal business and I work with business owners to think through, and that is this, what are your goals for the current year and will they push over into next year? You know, every year at the beginning of the year, I often teach that we should go through strategic planning. And we've, we've talked at nauseum on how to do strategic planning. We have it in our books. We have it in the coursework. It's in the blog. We've talked about it on the podcast. So I don't want to dive into strategic planning today. But nonetheless, per perhaps, just perhaps, Earlier this year, Q1, you were casting out your goals for this calendar year. 
Now, as you look back on your goals for this calendar year, let's ask some questions. Were your goals clearly defined? Did you achieve them? Why or why not? Did they change throughout the year? Why or why not? What will you do differently next year to reach perhaps the goals you didn't achieve or reach the new goals? What are you going to do differently? It's not uncommon for us as business owners to make a list of goals and then throughout the year because of life, because of circumstances, economic, internal, whatever, we often forsake our goals move a little bit away from them. And then we get to the end of the year and we're like, oh man, I didn't hit my goals that I was trying to achieve. And we feel, because I hear so many people talk this way as business owners, we feel a little bit disheartened. We feel like deflated, like, man, we didn't hit everything we want to accomplish. And then we start making excuses. Well, but for this, but for this, but for, and then put whatever that this is in your own business. Let me ask you this question. What are you going to do differently next year to prevent yourself from sitting here in November, December of 2023 and feeling perhaps deflated or feeling perhaps that you didn't accomplish everything you needed to accomplish? There was a study done that said that 71% of fast growing companies have strategic plans and business plans outlining short term and long term planning tools. Similarly, Funding for Good Reports wrote a study that says, have a written plan doubles the organization chance of success. So as you wrap this year up, visit your goals from last year. Let's talk honestly and openly about why we didn't achieve those or why we did. And now as we look into next year, we should now begin thinking about, okay, what are our goals as a company for next year? How are we going to achieve the goals next year and give us a greater opportunity of success? What do we need to change within the ecosystem of our company? So to me, the third item on the checklist is revisit the past so we can reflect into the future where we're headed. Now, as a financial advisor, it's not applicable to everybody or every company out there, but specifically in the financial industry, we have some compliance, annual compliance requirements that we have to do. Rule 206-4-7 is underneath the Investment Advisors Act of 1940. And what it requires is to do a full review of, quote, policies and procedures, as well as the internal controls on an annual basis. So have you looked at your policies and procedures as, as well as your internal controls this year? Have you formally gone through that process? Have you included your annual compliance review? Now, this is not an exhaustive list of things, but there are some things that we should look at. Is your ADV up to date? Is your CRS up to date? The deputy director of the SEC's enforcement division, Sanjay Wally, was quoted on the report by saying, quote, with today's actions, the SEC is now charged 42 financial firms for failing to meet the obligations that are required to ensure retail investors understand their relationships with their securities industry professional. We urge firms that continue to be delinquent in the filing of their form CRS obligations to come into compliance with the law and to self-report to the SEC. Friends, that's a pretty heavy statement. That's just form CRS. So for those of us in the financial world, we have several different things that we're required to do. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. Just reminding you as you wrap your year up that there are some things that you need to do annually that you're required to do annually with regards to your business. Now, maybe you're not a financial advisor. Maybe you do, on the other hand, have obligations within your particular business that you just need to take a look at. This is a gentle nudge, a gentle reminder to say, hey, Look at your annual requirements. Talk with your compliance departments. Talk with your attorneys. Talk with your advisors, your business advisors, whoever they may be for your particular business, and make sure that you're meeting all your annual requirements before the year's over. But in my checklist, as we get through those four items, I come to my favorite item, and that is to rest and reflect. Rest and reflect. You know, Brent Castle the VP of the HR group at Gartner made a quote that I thought was powerful. And he said, quote, rest is not the absence of performance. It's part of performance. We as business owners love to charge hell with a water pistol. And we do. In fact, we, we, we almost end up enjoying the stress, enjoying the battle, the fight, if you will, that we face day in, day out. I, I was talking with my mom over Thanksgiving and she was talking about future and different things. And I said, you know, mom, at some point there's, there's going to be a time whenever I'm probably not going to be running at the same rate I'm running now. 
And she laughed and she said, son, you are geared to operate at an advanced speed. You'll forever have a, have a mission. You'll forever have some mountain that needs to be climbed somewhere. That's just the way that God designed you. And as business owners, for those of us who have succeeded in business, we understand that because of the sheer pressure, the frustrations, the, the angst, the, the burden. I was talking with a business owner over the holiday season, and they, they, were, they were internally sad. And they, said, they said, quote, I'm lonely. I'm lonely. I, I can't talk to anybody. I can't talk to my team because they don't understand. It sounds like I'm whining. I can't talk to my customers because obviously the customers are the service of products, and I don't want them to hear any type of problems. I really can't talk to my family because they don't understand the business or they perhaps are not business owners. I can't talk to my family. I can't talk to my attorney because they want to charge me hundreds of dollars per hour. I can't talk to my advisors because of various reasons. I just am lonely. Friends, this is the time of the year. When it's okay, it's okay if we just rest. Take care of yourself. I heard a statement not too long ago that says, what is wealth, which is what we're all trying to achieve, what is wealth without health? If you think about that statement, you know, we're on this journey to to build our business for an eight-figure exit. And many times we, business owners, put so much to the back burner. We put our family, we put our friends, we put our own wealth we put our own health, put so much to the back burner so that we can, we can operate this company that really energizes us, that we love pouring into. But friends, as we come to a year end, it's, it's just a reminder to say, hey, take a break. Take a moment. We have Christmas and New Year's. I think it's a powerful time of the year to just take off, unplug, give your team a chance. The holidays are just there for family and friends anyways. And I get their business takes some precedence, but we as business owners need a moment to rest, to reflect. So as we rest, let's think about what we accomplished positively this year. And let's review them and position our thoughts for a powerful next year. You know, friends, the goal, the goal of this series is to build our company for an eight-figure exit. That's the goal of this particular series, and we can do it. It it can be accomplished. Your business is not any different than anybody else's. I often say it, and I, I laugh about it when I say it, but it is so true. Look, man, if I was born on a dirt road in South Georgia, and I live on a dirt road, in a gravel road in East Tennessee, if I can build a business for exit, you can too. I'm just an old country boy. I'm not anything special. And if I can do it, you can. So let me encourage you. This may have been a very rough year. It may have been a tough year. You may be down on your luck. You may be at the point where, as the old saying goes, you're just going to have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Wherever you're at in this, in this year, if you're feeling that way, let me give you a little hope that says it's a new day. It's a new dawn. The new year coming up. Let's make it the best ever. Perhaps you just came off the best year of your life and you're like fist bumping. You're like, man, Justin, if I give you a fist bump right now, dude, I would just, man, it'd be great. First of all, congratulations. Having a banner year is amazing. Doesn't mean that next year can't outperform it. Doesn't mean that next year, even perhaps you're coming off a high and you see some troubles in the waters ahead of you. That's okay. Next year is just as bright. So friends, it's year end. We're wrapping up. We're looking back. We're looking forward. We're praising our team. We're thinking about what we accomplished, what we didn't. We're encouraging ourselves. We're resting. We're doing all these things that we as business owners just need to do. If you find yourself perhaps lonely, you're like, man, Justin, I can't talk to anybody. There are a group of business advisors that would be more, more than happy to chat with you to help you, to put perspective around the challenges that you're dealing with. Perhaps you're hearing five by five by five for the first time, and you're like, Justin, that's amazing. How do we do it? Hey, reach out. We have a team of business advisors that can help you. Until next time, friends, life is it's hard. I get it. And it's tough. Tough never hurt anybody. But, man, life is so good. We are so blessed. If you look back on this year, hard times, yes. But think about all the goodness. Think about all the blessings that you and I have in our lives. So much to look forward to. The future is so bright. Friends, y'all go out and make it a great day. Take care.